Welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing how I made a custom anime statue or figurine of Roll from Mega Man. To get the portions I need, I start with a hybrid of a dollar store doll head and a boxy girl body. Just like making a regular custom doll, I remove the face with acetone and cut the original hair as short as I can. Then I remove the head by soaking it in hot water. I'll be drastically changing the lower leg shape, and so I was intending to snap the legs at the knee joint here, but I was pleasantly surprised to find out the leg actually pulls straight out at the knee. Now I have some spare joints that I can use in the future for adding extra articulation to another doll. I remove her hands and make a cut just above where the hand peg inserts, so I can also reuse these later if I want to. The arm got a bit squished, so I correct the shape with some pliers. I use my rotary tool to carve a cavity for the wire to anchor into. I use floral wire for this. I'm not worried about the strength of this armature as it's not meant to be mobile or bent. I use liquid super glue to secure the wire. Getting it to dry in the right position requires some trial and error. Off camera, I cover the wire in hot glue. I tried filming, but accidentally gave myself a second degree burn. But don't worry, this footage is old and I'm all healed now. With the body prepped and the armature set, I can start sculpting her new form. I'm using a medium weight air dry clay. I think this was called polyform when I bought it, but since then Sculpey has acquired the formula. It takes a lot of kneading to get smooth, but I like it for body mods. After I bulked up the torso and the limbs have cured, I go in with a second pass of clay. This time I'm using Crayola Model Magic in white. This is really light and easy to smooth out. I use my tools to keep the space open between the knees so there's room to add the boots later. You can use water to smooth this just like with epoxy sculpt and regular air dry clay. Once the second pass of clay has dried a bit, I coat everything in Elmer's glue. This acts as a bridge and prevents the clay from separating from the plastic as it further dries out. I do another coat of glue once the first layer is dry. For parts that are more fragile and not as bulky, I like to use epoxy clay. This is a two-part chemical curing compound. I shape out the initial wedge shapes of the hands and as it's curing, I roll out several little sausages to become her fingers. Thankfully, Roll has large and exaggerated hands, so my lack of skill with this clay isn't a major detriment. I use my clay tools to blend in the added clay and position one finger at a time. After the hands are fully cured, I switch back to the cold air dry clay and continue shaping the shoes. I make two chunky rectangular pieces for the cuffs at the top. Then I blend them into the existing clay. I 
I smooshed some pyramid shapes for the toes of the shoes. And I start carving out the details of the soles. For her clothes, I needed a lighter clay, so I'm using Crayola Model Magic again. I just use my spray bottle to roll out the clay evenly since I don't have a little rolling pin. I figured making her clothes in a similar way to how I make a fabric dress would work well. So I make a skirt pattern and test it out, adjust it and repeat until I have the form I like. Unlike fabric, if I accidentally cut off too much, I can just add more clay and merge it in. One of my favorite things about this clay is how well it sticks to itself. I squish the clay into the form of the torso to create a seamless bodice. A little water goes a long way for blending. If you add too much to model magic clay, it can weaken and tear easily. I add in little slivers of clay to act as wrinkles around the waist. I cut out two small rectangles for the top part of her dress and I use a metal tool to trim away the excess at the shoulders. Another longer rectangle is needed for her collar. Then I form two circles for the buttons on the front by flattening rolled balls. It's time to start building her stand. I drill out a small hole in some wood and secure the figure through a hole in the foot and some strong wire. This is reinforced with hot glue. I had chosen a jumping pose for roll and to blend the figure into the stand and to help counterbalance its weight, I build out round clouds of dust with aluminum, hot glue, and air dry clay. Now that she can dry in an upright position, it's time to put the finishing touches on her outfit. With more model magic, I start forming the sleeves. I start with a flattened piece of clay, wrap it around the arm, and cut the excess off. I form the cuffs in a similar way. 
I avoid putting any clay around the shoulder joint. For the moment, I need to be able to work around them for a while. I give everything another coat of Elmer's Glue Wall to help strengthen the model magic and to ease the transition between plastic and clay. To make her hair, I want to use oven baked polymer clay, so I cover her head with plastic wrap. It's sort of like making a fiber wig. Thanks to the magic of editing, you don't have to watch me work this clay for three hours straight. It was so old and hard and my hands were sore for days. Next time, I'm just going to buy some clay softener. I'm just building her hair up piece by piece. Since her design is pretty simple, it wasn't too hard to break the hair down into a few basic sections. Eventually I ran out of lime yellow and had to soften up some black polymer clay. The color variation doesn't matter since everything will be painted later. Once I'm done blending everything together, it's time to give the hair a quick bake in the oven. After it's cooled down, it's nice and sturdy. I pop it back on her head and start working on her ponytail. Off camera, I shape something like a flipper with a ball on the end. Then I cut small triangles out of the flat end with scissors. Using the round end of a plastic tool, I create the lines leading from the cuts to the top of the ponytail. I switch to a metal tool to make the lines deeper and sharper. Then the ponytail gets baked. I attached the ponytail to the head using super glue. I was kind of worried about how well this would hold up, but it was secure in shipping. I decided at the last minute to open her mouth. I draw out the shape I want with a number two pencil. Then using a small pointed bit on my rotary tool, I start cutting along the guidelines. I switch to a ball bit to smooth out the edges. Off camera, I used a file to clean her mouth up. I don't want her mouth to just be gaping, so I start filling the head with aluminum foil. The twisting motion of putting the foil in actually helps sand the edges of the mouth even more. After much stuffing, it's time to create the inside of her mouth. I use Model Magic again, and I push a small amount in until it backs up to the foil. Then I start caving it in with a rounded tool. After I'm happy with the cavity, I make a flat circle and place it in the bottom to become her tongue. Off camera, I sprayed her body with a sandable primer to help smooth out any roughness of the clay. Then I give her hair a coat of white paint. I also gave the body a coat of white paint. Then I start laying down the base paint colors for the largest areas. Gradually, I work down to the smaller areas. For some parts, there's not much space to get a paintbrush in, so I have to mask off sections. For the most part, it stopped me from having to go back and forth and paint and repaint a bunch of spots. You can see here that the skin color I used is a semi-gloss paint. I didn't realize that when I bought it, but a coat of Mr. Super Clear will make everything matte anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. After the base coat is dry, I mix up gradually lighter colors and do some highlighting. I apply these shades with a small wet brush, then I blend it in with a dry flat brush. This is a technique that I use a lot when painting with acrylic on canvas, and I like it a lot. I think this is called dry blending. Everything I do is self-taught and I'm sure I'm using um, incorrect terms a lot. Sorry to all the art school students.
After I am happy with the look of the paint, I seal everything with Liquitex Matte Varnish. I tackle her face just like when I make a custom doll. I use a light brown watercolor pencil to start sketching her features in. If I remember correctly, I had glued the hair down at this point, so I had to work around her bangs. I take my time with the sketch and try to get her expression right. Thankfully, this color erases nicely if I make a mistake. When I like the placement, I start working on line widths and start laying down colors. I know this character design, um, Roll's eyes are not green. I catch this later and fix it. I gradually darken the colors. I like the irises to have a darker top like the eyelid has cast a shadow on them. For some minor blushing, I dab on some of my pastel pencils and blend them out with a blending stick, also called the tortillion. At this point, my computer started to run updates and restart, so I lost the footage of an entire layer. Thanks, Windows. Continuing on what is now the third layer, I'm applying soft pastels. Like usually, I'm using an applicator to apply thick layers of pastels so that I don't need to do as many layers. I'm using a medium orange to add shadows to her hair and around her eyes and mouth. For the hair, I try to concentrate on areas where the light won't be hitting it as much to give it a false sense of depth. I mix an almost white yellow shade and paint in a few highlights along the crown of her head. I also paint a ring around the top of her ponytail and at the bottom where her hair breaks apart. Now to clean up the details of her face. I brighten up the whites of her eyes and finish up the highlights in her irises. At this point, I realized that her eyes needed to be blue, so I'm just going over the green colors with an acrylic paint. I draw in a transition between the black top and the new baby blue bottom with a pastel pencil in navy blue. Then I neaten up the edges with a black pastel pencil and touch up the pupils. After that, I blend everything with a tortillion and push the black up into the whites of the eyes to create an upper shadow. I add a mid-tone saturated blue to the eyes and then clean up the details with acrylic paint again. I noticed her eyes were not quite even, so I altered the shape of the lid to make them match a bit better. 
Using white, I paint in the specular reflections on her boots. And I dab a tiny white dot on her tongue. I use a soft brush to add in some light blush to her hands, knees, and ears. Then I do more blushing with gray to the white areas of her clothing. With the painting done, it's time to add some of the thinnest pieces of this figure. For these, I decided to skip clay altogether and use craft foam instead. I cut a thin strip of green foam and measure the amount needed to wrap around her ponytail. I heat the foam with a hair straightener so I can change the shape. I know most artists use the flame from a candle for this, but I always do terribly and burn myself when I try it. I also made her a petticoat out of white foam. I made a bunch of test patterns before cutting this piece out. I heat it and slide it into place. Even with the tests, it didn't quite fit, so I had to trim down the area in front of her raised knee. After a few modifications, I got it into place. I take the leftover green foam and heat it to make the top part of the bow. If you accidentally make a shape you don't like with the foam, all you have to do is reheat it and you can mold it again. I heat the ends of the ribbon and bend them upwards so they have the same gravity-defying lift that the rest of the character does. When I like this shape, I super glue the pieces together. There was a gap after changing the pattern for the petticoat, so I cut a small petal shape to fit into this space. Off camera, I paint a few highlights on the bow. Now I just need to add the gloss to the shiny bits. Her eyes and buttons get two coats of gloss, but I believe her boots are metal, so they got at least five coats of gloss for an extra shine. Her bow gets some gloss as well to imitate satin better. And she's done. Making this figure was quite an adventure. She was a commission for one of my favorite clients' friends, and I really hope they're still enjoying her even now a year later. Hit the like button if you enjoyed watching and subscribe if you want to see more custom toys and art from me soon. Bye!